five, four, three, two, one. Jordan Davis. Say the name is important, ain't it? Especially to me, rap music's why some may call me the greatest. Ahmaud Arbery was hunted. George Floyd suffocated till he fainted. Eric Gardner also couldn't breathe. I mean, this system's tainted. And it isn't just police, yes, it's white men to say the least. We know black on black exists, but that's for black on black to speak. Before you go and judge a brother, damn, just let me speak my piece. I tell you how I had lost everything except this culture from the streets and how I brought about this peace in this community of mine. So I'll tell you all the story about what kept this lyricist alive. The Lyricist Live, a community freestyle cipher I started in 2011 as an ode to the golden era of rap, the hip hop 90s, see? The 90s was a fine era in time where we would get together in rhyme to expand each other's minds and I wanted to take us back to that time. A time that when the DJs played in the park, a time back when the 80s birthed in the Bronx, a phenomenon that bonded a whole community together. The message was peace, love, having fun, and unity forever. So as 2011 passes and the cipher makes a statement, the Florida Folk Life Program sees the purpose in its preservation. 2012 to 2013, it was clear to those who know art, that's the year state folklorist Blaine Wade recognized my style as folk art. And that's when I became the first freestyle rap folk artist in history. Just doing the things that every black kid did. It's been around for half a century. Founded by a Jamaican immigrant. It's significant because that energy brought African Americans and Latinos together to solve a crime problem collectively. You see, the South Bronx in the 70s suffered an economic crisis. Crews ran rampant through abandoned buildings. Gangs were left to their own vices. Under Gerald Ford's presidency, streets lay destitute and torn. And around all this in 1976, me and my twin sister was born while hip hop culture took on this form, you see. My pops was a poet and a jazz player, had me reciting Shakespeare on stage at five. He passed away and left notes he wrote behind that gave me a sense of pride. Mom was a revolutionary from New Orleans who saw segregation in 55, vowed to move out north to NYC where black families could thrive. She had four boys, I made five. I was her youngest out of eight. Make it there, we make it anywhere. You know the phrase, we should be straight. She did everything that a mother could to protect us during these times, but she could never predict the upcoming crack epidemic of 1985. Unemployment, record high. People struggling to survive. 75% of black teens with no job is do or die. Government tax breaks for the rich and more cutbacks for the poor. President Reagan was an actor, so I see why he cut us more. Graffiti artists like Keith Herring even got involved in the fight. Crack is whack, that's what he wrote. See how that rhymed? It caught on, right? Self-destruction is self-destruction. That was the message that resonated. They said, just say no to drugs, but messages through arts related elevated my mind state and helped me with memorization. Mama moved us off the block trying to avoid the devastation. She got my twin sister and my brother out the city just in time to watch crack consume her daughter and my brother serve his time. While in prison, he wrote me rhymes. He told me I'd be great in Florida. Mom's struggling without pops. I had to be the man supporting her. It was torture for a couple months because we had no home. 
I met Jacksonville kids who spit legit and gripped the microphone, showed me I wasn't alone. Man, we were plagued across state lines. Mostly what we had in common was this culture and these rhymes. Finished high school just in time for moms to see me graduate and made her glad. Shortly after that, she met my dad and passed away. She left me and Jax. That's where I saw this cycle just continue. Prisons consuming black men like melanin was on the menu. So I brought my brothers on to the block and started up a conversation. Speak a truth that's heard without most of the miscommunication. No cursing, kids are watching, be a leader with dictation, put positive energy into it and you can change your situation. Poetry my pops had showed to me at just the age of five, took me across the seas years later to do Shakespeare in my prime, use my gift to uplift others, can't be selfish with my son and my words to plant seeds, can't be out here wasting time. That's the message in my story and the purpose in my grind, support the arts, cause that's what kept this lyricist alive.